Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and compare the iPad 10th generation against the iPad 8th generation and see which specific one is the better one for you. Now obviously I would say the iPad 10 is the better one in pretty much most areas. It's also still available to buy because it's brand new. The iPad 8 has been discontinued for about a year or almost two years now at this point if you think about it. So if you want to pick up you know, what iPad I would recommend buying this year, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of both these iPads, the price tags are a little bit different. The iPad 8 when it first came out, I believe is around that $300 price tag. The iPad 10 now is $449. So definitely has gone a long ways away from its cheaper price tag. It puts it pretty much almost at the same price as the iPad mini 6. And it's about, I believe, like $150 different from the iPad Air. So this model kind of doesn't make too much sense in my opinion, but it is what it is. Now there's also more color options you can choose from, from the iPad 10 as well. So that might be something you might be, you know, interested in. Now on the iPad 8 that came out a few years ago, we have a 10.2 inch retina display on it. So I think it wasn't a bad panel, but I would say nowadays you're definitely getting a way better panel on the iPad 10. The resolution was fairly high. You were also getting a little bit of bezel around it. You know, it's definitely noticeably more than something like the iPad 10. You're still maintaining the home button on it with Touch ID, you know, on the front. But otherwise though, I think it held up kind of well. Again, there's way more problems, I would say, than just the amount of bezel within the display. So I don't really have too many issues with the design or the way this specific iPad looks, in my opinion. Now on the iPad 10, we have a, you know, larger 10.9 inch liquid retina display. Now this one has true tone, and it's overall a better panel than I would say with the 10.2 inch iPad 8. So it's a bigger panel, but you're also missing out on a lot of that bezel, thank goodness. So you're not getting a home button. You're still maintaining Touch ID 2 or Touch ID, which is really nice. And yeah, I mean, there's just way less bezel on it. You don't really have to worry about having like an outdated iPad because you were still getting a really good design on the iPad 10, which I'm really happy about. But the iPad 8, I still think is fairly decent looking. Like it's not ugly, but definitely it is a little bit more dated than something like the iPad 10, but the iPad 8 and the iPad 9 both share fairly similar designs. So that's kind of something to keep in mind. Now the iPad 10 has flat sides completely around it. So it matches in line with the current iPhones. It also matches in line with the iPad Pros. So that's a really, really nice touch that you have on the iPad 10. Now on the iPad 8, it's a little bit of a different story. You have this kind of curved side on it. So I don't know if it's like that big of a deal for a majority of people out there. But again, it's just like one of those things to keep in mind that the design on that iPad is a little bit more dated than maybe some people even you know realize. Now on the bottom, we also have a little bit of a different port selection. So with the iPad 8, we had that standard lightning port, which is the same thing on all the iPhones currently supported. We also had a headphone jack on the iPad 8, which some people may prefer. On the iPad 10, we had a USB-C port. So this is where things are kind of getting a little bit more interesting because now we're going from lightning to USB-C on the base generation of iPads. But the issue here is that that USB-C port doesn't, you know, it's not Thunderbolt, which is perfectly fine but the iPad 10 still supports Apple Pencil 1. So the main issue on hand is that if you were using an iPad 8, if you wanted to use your Apple Pencil, all you had to do is just plug it into the bottom and that was it, you're pretty much good to go. With the iPad 10 now, if you wanna use that Apple Pencil, you will have to go and grab a dongle, plug in a wire to that dongle, and then plug in your Apple Pencil to the end of that specific dongle. So it's like you're having this huge wire and you have to plug it in, it's just such a pain. So I would rather have just preferred to plug it into the iPad, which was already an inconvenience. Now you have to grab a wire and you have to grab a dongle, and then you have to plug it into the dongle. I don't really, I'm not a fan of that at all. I wish Apple didn't go that direction. Again, there's not much we can do in this specific situation, but that is one thing that kind of rubs me the wrong. Now on the back, we have flat sides on both. You have a little connector port on the bottom of the iPad 10, which is really cool. So you can connect to keyboards. You can also connect to keyboards on the iPad 8 as well. Now, when it comes down to the actual camera sensors though, this is where things get you know very interesting as well. So on the back, they actually have kind of interesting setups. So the iPad 8 had an eight megapixel wide angle camera on the back and had a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. On the iPad 10, we have a 12 megapixel wide angle camera on the back, and we have a 12 megapixel landscape ultra wide front camera. So the difference here is that you're getting way better sensors on the iPad 10, which I'm really happy about. But the thing also is that the landscape camera on the iPad 10 gives you the impression that if you're going through and if you're in Zoom calls or whatever the case is, if you turn that you know iPad over to landscape mode, 
it'll actually be in normal format. So that is a really cool thing. The camera will now be on top, and I actually do prefer this a lot more than how the iPad 8 had its front camera. But otherwise, if you're not really even caring too much about it or if it's not a big deal, then it may not be that big of an issue for a lot of people watching this, but I personally do think that's cool, and I'm actually a huge fan of the way the direction that Apple is going for in this direction, because a lot of Android tablets like the Galaxy Tabs have already gone down that direction. Now you're still getting a really, I would say you're getting a camera on the iPad 8. Is that the best camera? It's kind of almost like an iPhone 6 camera on that type of iPad. So you have to kind of ask yourself, is the phone that you're using in your pocket, is it better than an iPhone 6? Well, then it's going to be better than the iPad 8. However, the iPad 10 camera is almost on par with the iPad 10R, at least on the back. So if you have a type iPhone 10R newer, then, or an iPhone 11 or newer, then the iPad 10 is probably not going to be the main camera you're going to be using. It's probably going to be the iPhone 11 in that specific situation. So in that situation, the iPad 10 definitely has a better camera for sure. Now moving on to the software and longevity, this is a very interesting thing because the iPad 8 has that A12 Bionic chip inside. The iPad 10 has that A14 Bionic chip inside. So this is something to keep in mind. The iPhone, the iPad 8 has pretty much the same chipset as the iPhone 10R. The iPad 10 has the same chipset as the iPhone, pretty much the iPhone 12. So there's a really big difference here in terms of the performance. There's two years of generations between these two devices. So you are definitely going to be getting a longer lasting iPad on the iPad 10 but it's also going to be faster, it's going to be better, it's going to be pretty much everything you'd ever want from an iPad, it's going to be there on the iPad 10. So although the iPad 8, in my opinion, is still going to be you know very fast, it's not really going to give you or cause you too many issues, I think, you know, quite obviously and quite comfortably, the iPad 10 is definitely going to be the one that's going to last longer. But this also trickles down to the performance segment as well. You're also going to be getting a way, at least in my opinion, a way better performing and a way more optimized iPad on the iPad 10 than on the iPad. So not only are you getting, you know, just from the sheer numbers, you're getting just a way better chipset on the iPad 10 with twice the amount of neural engine, which is very interesting. You're also going to be getting, I think, more RAM. I'm not too sure. It's not giving me numbers on the, you know, spec sheet on Apple. But I will say, from my experience of using both these iPads, the iPad 10 is definitely going to be the faster one. It's a newer design and it's going to give you like a better feeling overall using it. But I still think the iPad 8, like just like how I feel with the iPhone XR, it is still a very decent performing iPad. If you're a student and you're taking notes, if you're even going through and editing some videos, if you're going through and playing some games or whatever the case is, I still think an iPad like the iPad 8th generation is still going to be plenty of powerful for a majority of people watching this video. If you give me an iPad 8th generation and you told me to do everything I need to do in a day on it, I could probably do it. It may not be the most comfortable thing in the world, but I would be able to do it and I don't think I would be able to max out all that power if I'm being honest. Now the iPad 10, I think this is a very good iPad and it's obviously better than the iPad 8. And that's that, you know, if you want more power, then the iPad 10 is there for you. But I don't think you have to go from an iPad 8 to an iPad 10 to experience that. I think you can also go from an iPad 8 to an iPad Air 4 that has, you know, the same, pretty much the same specifications as the iPad 10. It's just a better iPad and you could probably even get that for cheaper. So I will tell you, if you're jumping from the iPad 8 to the iPad 10, just because the performance, then I would probably recommend saving up more money and then going for the M1 iPad Air. If you really need the most amount of performance possible, the M1 iPad Air is probably the best value per dollar. If you need the most amount of power, the iPad Pro is there for you, but this is a decent option and I would probably recommend going down this direction. So to kind of sum up this video, I think the iPad 10 is better than the iPad 8 in every single area, but I still think, like I mentioned, I mean, if you're not in a rush to upgrade, I would say keep your iPad 8 for a little bit longer, maybe another year. Hopefully Apple will go and flesh out their iPad lineup a little bit better and hopefully drop down some of these price tags but i guess you're going to have to wait and see but overall if the ipad 10 was a 10 out of 10 no pun intended the ipad 8 is probably like a you know i think it's like a seven and a half out of 10 it has an older chipset it has a little bit of an older design and the cameras aren't as good but otherwise i think you know it's still supported and i think it's still a decent ipad for its price tag so that kind of covers it up if you have any other thoughts or questions let me know in the comment section below hit the like button on me so much but definitely hit that subscribe button more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.